thank you, Saudara Kok Hin. Thank God it's a short salutation list. Um, our distinguished guest lecturer, Dr. Venkat Ayer, uh, Mr. Philip Ko. I When I came in, I was surprised to see Mr. Ko here. Uh, and I went up straight to him and say, uh, Mr. Ko, do you know that when I was a student uh, 15 years ago in UM, you were an icon to us. Uh, those of us who were studying in UM, those of us who were in uh, the legal uh, uh, studies, he was an icon to us. Uh, in the sense that uh, there, there he is, uh, and a towering intellect, but also somebody who is very passionate uh, about law in the public sphere. Until uh, until when he started to oscillate between corporate law and I think still doing a little bit of public law. So, uh, Mr. Philip Ko, uh, I'm glad that you're here today. Dr. Wong Ching Huat, uh, uh, without whose have effort we would not have today's uh, forum, and uh, colleagues, friends, uh, ladies and gentlemen. <coughs> Somebody asked me just now, well, what does a director do for Penang Institute? I said one of the uh, role of the director is to stand in uh, for important leaders of the institute when they are not around. So here am I, uh, standing in for my colleague Zairiel Kiyo Johari, who is the executive director of Penang Institute. He's in KL and he sends his regard. I remember about a year ago, I was standing here in this uh, lecture hall and uh, I spoke about the Auditor General. It was a forum about the Auditor General. Some of you may have uh, remembered it. Today, I'm tasked to address a forum about the Attorney General. Maybe next year, God willing, and uh, Dr. Wong Ching Huat, I'll finally be asked to talk about the Prime Minister. <laughs> in my speech last year, I talked about Christopher Nolan's 2008 Batman installment, The Dark Knight, and his 2012 The Dark Knight Rises. How many of you have watched the movie? Not too bad, the crowd. <laughs> um, in the movies, if you have watched it, Batman, our superhero, uh, the billionaire playboy by day and the vigilante superhero by night, and Jim Gordon, the uh, head of Gotham City Police Department, work together to keep secret the crimes of the former Attorney General Harvey Dent, uh, who finally became Two-Face, the famous villain in the Batman series. And their reason why the police and our superhero came together to keep the crimes of the uh, former Attorney General secret, their reason is simple, to maintain public stability. Isn't this a very familiar situation for us here in Malaysia? The big boys coming together to protect certain secret crimes to ensure social stability. Do not question the government's action. Do not question 1MDB investigation. Do not even question 1MDB. Do not question anything, whatever. We need to maintain social order. As if we are better protected when wrongdoings are covered up, especially wrongdoings of the powers that be. And that, that becomes some kind of sick logic internalized in our society today that society is sustained by criminal activities. For example, justice being served through unequal treatment or selective persecution at best, or vigilantism at worst. Or the economy is being grown through alienation of a major segment of the society at best, or investment scams and corruption at worst. And in all this, all of us are expected to keep quiet because exposing them will bring about chaos and instability to the society. <laughs> no wonder then, in Nolan's Batman, the one who finally was trying to expose all this secret, from the secret of Batman's identity, to the secret pact between our superhero and the police, to the secret of the Attorney General's killing spree, he is a crazy, he's a clown, the Joker, so brilliantly played by the late Heath Ledger. So that now within this perverse logic which says we do not question the authority in order to maintain social stability. The one who ultimately does question, he is a clown, a madman. So my dear fellow madmen and women, <laughs> there is an old lawyer joke about how to differentiate between a good lawyer and a better lawyer. It is said that a good lawyer knows the law, 
but a better lawyer knows the judge. <laughs> I suppose the state of the AG's chamber today in Malaysia can be described by a modified version of that joke. That a good attorney general stands up for the law, but a better attorney general stands up for the Prime Minister. <laughs> Abdul Ghani Patan, the former AG, was terminated on the evening of 28 July in what I call in my press statement on that day, Najib's night of the long nights, where ministers and public officials who showed signs of disloyalty to the Prime Minister was purged. Even Deputy Prime Minister Muhyiddin Yassin himself was sacked. And their crime? Being the mad fellas trying to unearth one of the biggest financial scandals in the world, 1MDB and the 2.6 billion ringgit donation to the Prime Minister's personal bank account. <coughs> And rather unsurprisingly, one of the first tasks of the new AG, Apandi Ali, was to clear 1MDB of wrongdoings. But my dear friends, this latest debacle of the institution of the AG is but the result of a long, deep crack sustained over many decades of abuses. Even for Abdul Ghani himself, some of us may remember, it was really chickens coming home to Bruce, beginning with Anwar Ibrahim's infamous Black Eye incident in 1998. <laughs> and I remember in the early days of the uh, Pakatan Rakyat at that time, state government in Penang, when the state government wanted to introduce the Freedom of Information enactment, it was faced with objections from none other than the state legal advisor, the state equivalent and really a branch of the Federal AG's chamber. Or Consider the role of the Perak State Legal Advisor in 2009 uh, during the Perak Constitutional Crisis. He who blocked the emergency seating convened by the Pakatan Rakyat Speaker in March of 2009. <laughs> and as members of Parliament, we are often confronted with badly drafted legislation, or worse, draconian laws which are even ultra virus the Constitution table in Parliament from time to time from the AG's chamber. To be fair, my dear friends, the AG is without doubt one of the hardest jobs in the government. But it is clear that real reform is des desperately needed, especially on the independence and the professionalism of the AG's chamber. They call me unorthodox or even a madman. But I'm convinced that the role of the chief lawyer of Malaysia is to advise the government to do what is right, not to advise the government how to legitimize what is wrong. <laughs> Which is why we are here today. Uh, and for that, I would like to thank the Penang Institute, my colleagues, especially Dr. Wong Ching Wat, for organizing this, uh, this uh, timely forum, this timely discussion. Uh, in Parliament, we are already talking about the the reform of the of the parliament of the Dewan Rakyat, and uh, I think last two days I was I was away. I was really busy, but I glanced through a news uh, by the uh, speaker who said that he has agreed to certain recommendations from the uh, from the reform committee. So I think it is also apt at this point, as we are talking about uh, structural and institutional reforms in our country, because I believe that without this important renewal, uh, even if you put another party in government, you may not get the full results of the full fruits of democracy. So uh, my utmost gratitude to our distinguished guest speaker, Professor Ben Kak Ayer, for your gracious presence today to address us. And of course, once again, uh, my appreciation to Mr. Philip Kaur idols from my young days, and I'm sure still, uh, for your presence. Uh, have an engaging evening. I would like to apologize because I have to leave immediately after this speech. This is my second program of the evening, and I have a third one. I think the next forum should be a reform on what is the role of the Member of Parliament. But uh, with that, uh, I would like to once again welcome all of you, and thank you for your attendance. Have a fruitful discussion. Thank you very much.